Welcome back for another episode of Living Free Alaska. After the sudden and unexpected loss of my mom and having to spend the last five weeks in Spokane taking care of her estate and affairs, it's finally time to get back on the road. Join us today as we begin the 2600 mile journey home back to Alaska. I haven't turned on my tire reminder system yet, so I gotta check my, I got my stick, got my air stick, gotta check the stuff. El Manuel. Yep, sometimes that's best. All right, tire pressure check is done. Motorhome tires are all within, well within spec, within two PSI. Trailer tires are within, within one and a half PSI of each other. I think that's a win. I think, I really think. Is he? Yeah, he's in the chair right here. I thought you'd locked him in. I did. <laughs> I think no man's Houdini. He got out of his straight jacket. Oh, okay. Fun. You need to find his harness, I think. He was in his harness. Okay. He well, Houdini did it. What happened, Newman? Where'd your harness go? You backed right out of it. Do we have to call you Houdini? Yeah, he Houdini did. <laughs> Alrighty. Alright, it's time to go. Oh. Time to go. This is it, guys. We're going home. North to Alaska. About time. Let's go. Okay. After our first night just outside of Newport, Washington, at our best friend's house, we turned our wheels towards North Idaho and the Eastport Kingsgate border crossing just north of Bonners Ferry. This route will take us through Kootenai National Park as we work our way over the first set of mountains towards Banff National Park in Alberta. The reason why we chose this route as it's another major route folks take when they RV to Alaska. And we wanted to refresh our memories of this route since we hadn't gone this way since 2019. Don't turn off the light, I'm coming on. Want the engine on off? I can hear you, okay? Okay. Where's home? Uh, Alaska. Okay, what brings me down? We were supposed to bring mother-in-law home, but she decided to pass away. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're going that. home without her. Okay. Well, she's here in a different form. Gotcha. <laughs> I appreciate your outlook. So how long are you in Canada for? Uh, just passing through, maybe a week. Five days, okay. okay. Maybe. I wish we'd stop in Alaric Hot Springs and maybe uh, get one out of Whitehorse. Alright. <laughs> Do you have any goods with you now that are staying behind in Canada? Like anything for sale? Yep. Any gifts for anybody? Nope, everything's for personal use. Oh, okay. Any alcohol or tobacco? Not in excess. No, no tobacco. A couple of bottles of bourbon. Okay, what's a couple of bottles? Two. Two? Okay. One mostly empty, one almost. Okay. Well, almost full. Alright. And what's in the trailer behind you? Uh, household goods from her home. Oh, okay. That we're taking home with us. Yep. Okay. All right. Any sort of firearms or weapons? No, thank you. Mace, pepper spray, taser, pistol. Bear spray. Bear, bear spray, spray, yes. Gotcha. And there wouldn't be anything like that in the goods behind there? Nope. No, you went through it all? I packed it all. Okay. Sounds good. Very familiar with the border crossing. Border, border regulations. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there wouldn't be any, like, gun parts, nothing like that? No nope. rounds? Perfect. All right. Sorry for your loss. Safe travels, folks. Thank, thank you very you. much. Enjoy your day. What? Shaking, rattling up front. I do feel it. Could it be this road? Well, as simple as a few questions, we are back in Canada. Uh, pretty easy, huh? Yeah, pretty easy questions. Uh, nothing. She was really kind of grilling on firearms and such and all that, but um, very confident that we don't have anything because we back the trailer ourselves. Absolutely. We don't know where we're going to stop tonight. We're just going to keep going until we're tired, I guess. Uh, we're just playing it by ear. But we're definitely on our way home. 
part of the Canadian Rockies between Radium and Banff, we were reminded of just how beautiful this part of Canada is. Even though the rain and the brief snow showers, I couldn't help but feel the presence of my mom riding right beside us. Oh, how she wanted to take this drive with us. And although she didn't make it in human form, I know she's watching every mile pass as we continue our journey home. Leave open the gate As it seems in the photo Nothing is as sweet going so long Nowhere I can ramble or long Could change my mind Could slow my coming home Now that we have reached Highway 93, the major highway that passes through Banff National Park, and with it getting dark, it's now time to find a place to pull over for the night. And using iOverlander app, I find a Lake Louise overflow parking lot that many before us have used as an overnight parking spot. No matter the rain, no matter the storm, I'm coming home. Oh, I'm coming home. Leave open the gate. Turn off the light, I'm coming on. Well, welcome to Canada. We've made it to the Lake Louise Banff National Park area, and we are uh, overnight parking in an overflow parking lot. Tomorrow morning, we will make our way up through the Icefields Parkway, and I don't know where tomorrow's stop will be, but it is definitely getting colder. We saw snow on the mountains. It rained most of the day once we got into Canada. And it's chilly. All right. Well, we're going to go inside. Gary is making lamb lamb chops, I believe, and uh, a rack of lamb. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a good night. Everything seems to be doing good. Alright, well, everything's holding up fine. I just went through and kind of gave every little strap a little click tighter. Um, you know, things kind of shift and settle as we move. But uh, all's good. Nothing out of place. No straps come undone. I think we're ready to get onto that ice field parkway today. And it's truly ice filled. And it's going to be icy. There's snow like right there. 500 feet above us. Didn't need that right there. Alrighty, alrighty. Hit the road. Let's see. Local time. Where are Ten fifteen. Oh shoot, we're that late. <laughs> it's Alberta. Okay. It's really nine fifteen. But BC Pacific. is nine fifteen and Alaska's eight fifteen. So <laughs> what time is it? It's Whatever. time to go. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever time.
155 miles already behind us. Today's goal is Grand Cache, Alberta, halfway up the Bighorn Highway, which is past Jasper National Park. To get there from the Lake Louise area, we must take the Icefields Parkway, which is one of the most beautiful drives in the Canadian Rockies. In fact, it is so beautiful, it is rated as one of the top drives in the world by Condé Nast Traveler. The Icefield Parkway is a 144 mile or 232 kilometer stretch of double lane highway winding along the Continental Divide through soaring Rocky Mountain peaks, ice fields and many glaciers with vast sweeping valleys. Although we did encounter some snowfall while driving the parkway, it never stuck to the road and just stayed up high in the mountains. The perfect location for us. As we neared the town of Jasper, the devastation from a summer wildfire started to appear on both sides of the parkway. On July 22nd, a major wildfire broke out and burned for over a month and destroyed one third of the small historic town. Homes, businesses, and the landscape forever changed by this fire. Our thoughts and prayers go out to this community and pray for a speedy recovery. We are now back on the Trans-Canada Highway 16, the Yellowhead Highway, headed east to Hinton, where we will turn the wheels north to Highway 40 and the Bighorn Highway towards Grand Cache. This is a great wildlife viewing area where we saw elk and bighorn sheep. <laughs> this part of the drive is where we begin to leave the Canadian Rockies and enter the high eastern plains. Similar to in the United States, the change is quick and before you know it, we are in just soft rolling hills as the miles click by. Welcome to the Bighorn Highway. The Bighorn Highway is a north-south highway that connects all the way to Grand Prairie, Alberta. Over the past eight years of traveling this highway, it has continued to be improved and is an easy drive through Western Alberta's southern oil fields. Not to be confused with parts of this highway south of Hinton, which can be labeled as dangerous, this stretch is fully paved with sweeping views of the rolling hills 
as we work our way north to Grand Prairie. When we arrived at our goal destination of Grand Cache at 3 p.m., we decided to push on to Grand Prairie as we still had several hours of daylight to burn. So we pushed on after a quick bathroom break for both us and the doggies. Welcome to Grand Prairie, Alberta. Tonight, oh, we did a lot of miles. I'll have to calculate that. I haven't done that yet. But tonight we are lot docking. What lot docking is, it's boondocking. It's free camping, wild camping in a commercial parking lot. And this is the Great Northern Casino. They are overnight friendly for RVs. All you have to do is go inside and ask permission, give them your name and your license plate number, and you're good to stay. So this is going to be our home for the night. We've got the slides out and we are settled and now we're trying to decide do we stay in and cook our own meal or do we go over to the casino and have dinner? I'm thinking Gary wants the day off, but yeah, it was an eight hour drive today and um, let me go calculate that mileage. Oh, hello, hello doggies. Are you the greeter? Yes, oh, I knew me. We're learning to be an RV dog, aren't we? Still not doing the best. But we're trying. All right, here's what we did. We started at Lake Louise in Banff, and we took the Icefields Parkway up through Jasper, and then at Hinton, we took the Bighorn Highway, Highway 40, up to Grand Prairie. In all, that is 392 miles. It's saying you can do this basically in seven hours. And we left at 10.15 and got here at 6. So it took us seven, and, 7 hours and 45 minutes. But we did have a couple of stops. We stopped in um, Jasper to let the dogs go to the restroom. And we also stopped in Grand Cash for a potty break. So I think we did pretty good. Tomorrow, we will actually be on the Alaska Highway once we cross in back into British Columbia and uh, we will hit mile zero of the Alaskan Highway in Dawson Creek. So, I'm very excited about that. Where we end up tomorrow night, no one knows, but we'll uh, be sure to let you know because you or on the ride with us. All right, I think I'm getting hungry and Gary's just now coming back with spirit from their walk. So we'll see what we do for dinner. Do you want meat? Yummy. Or do you want what they have? Well, I have a problem with that. What? What do you have a problem with my meat for? That didn't sound very good. You have a problem with my meat? Why? Two, two problems to consider if okay. we were to have this for dinner tonight. 
one, we don't have the proper materials to keep the meat fresh because you're going to break open the primal. You are the one that taught me that these could stay like this, refrigerated for almost a month. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't have a vacuum sealer. So here's the deal. We've got seven to ten days in a row. One, two, three. If we eat a steak every night, we'll be perfectly fine. Just cut them off, ziplog them into a gallon bag. Well, here's pears, problem number good. two. We're going a lot faster than we thought we were. You well, know. We're going to slow down now because we got into, we got, well, yes, today was the snow. <laughs> it snowed on us today. We wanted to get out of that. But when we hit the U.S. border, they may not like this. Well, then let's eat it. There is no way we are going to eat this entire primal pack. It's like even 14, 14 steaks, even seven days. if we took five to seven days, there's no way we would eat all that. You chicken. There's just no way. I know. You chicken. I know. Well, I, I, it's a challenge to me, but I guess we're not doing the challenge. Uh, we are safer to get that across the U.S. border <laughs> intact than open. Oh my gosh, our border crossing. They have been easy, but the moment we let our uh, our guard down, it'll be worse. Little baby fillets with bacon. Those were good. Well, we haven't had these. Oh, we haven't had those? Uh -huh. oh. Petite fillets or tenderloin with bacon wrapped. Or in there. What do you guys think we should do? We go to the casino. You'll probably see it before we. Uh, and give them a little business for allowing us to park here for free. Or stay in. Oh, let me check one more thing. Oh, there is a liquor store right across the street. He's going to the liquor cabinet. Oh, that's Jim. We do have a problem. <laughs> so. Is that your only bottle of bourbon? Yeah. Oh yeah, because once we, we, tomorrow we leave, tomorrow we leave civilization. I can't complain, we're parked for the night, so. Right, we're done. <laughs> All right, I think we're gonna go in and eat. Have you guys ever seen these? Look at this, we travel a lot. We generally have some alcohol on board. Liquor sock. It's just a sock. It's just a, a fuzzy sock. sock. It's a knitted sock. It's from our friends made for us. Bottles don't clank. <laughs> RV <laughs> hack. All right, let's uh, let's go visit, patronize the casino. We'll do that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> The lens is over here. <laughs> Well, good Thursday morning. Today is an exciting day as we officially start up the Alaska Highway once we reach Dawson Creek, British Columbia. But first on the agenda of things to do is get fuel in Tim Horton Donuts, a Canadian breakfast of champions. And even though no one can tell, I still feel that I Goodbye, Alberta. We have thoroughly enjoyed your beauty, but now it's time to enjoy beautiful British Columbia. I have learned that no one else can carry this load. It's a train where I'm the only passenger on board. Oh, there is beauty to enjoy on this road. But even so, I still feel that I'm alone I'm alone I'm alone I'm alone 
That American flag needs a little pep in its step. We made it to the start of the yell can. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, we still got a long ways long to go. Long ways to go. Let's hit that road. Mile zero in Dawson Creek. And then on the other post? Over here. This is our other channel, RVing to Alaska. We've been here several times with RVing to Alaska. First time as Living Free Alaska. So welcome to Dawson Creek. Um, this is the start of the Alcan, the Alaska Canadian Highway, mile zero. It goes all the way up to Delta Junction, Alaska. 1,426 miles. miles or something like that. We're not going to travel all the way up to Delta Junction. We're going to cut off a toke, so we'll get most of it. But it took us two days and a couple hours to get here, driving through uh, Albert, BC and Alberta. Now back we're back in into BC, BC now. And uh, we're going to go stop into the visitor center and uh, talk with them a little bit and then head on up to Taylor. And we have another little special invite or a special meeting there. Jin Jin, thinking of you. Sunny Cove kayaking, they're the best tour in Seward. Finding our someday, right next to us. Seen anyone? No, I don't think so. A lot of uh, foreign stuff. Yeah. All the way in the motorcycle expeditions north of south, south north. And yeah, less little tires, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Staple from home. Yes, dear, we're right here. <laughs> That's great. I could probably stand here all day and look. There's just so many stickers. But we've got to get going. So, we are out of here. We are officially on the Alaska Highway, or known as the Alcan. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you are notified whenever we post again. And lastly, we hope that you will join us here next time on Living Free Alaska.